got the faith the of Jesus. Jesus And it's deep down in my heart Way down deep, way down deep Way, way down, down deep down in my heart Way down deep, way down deep Way down deep down in my heart I got the grace, got the grace of Jesus I got the love, got the love
the farm Oh, and his grave He will lead, lead me on
now and then an old friend of mine who I've not seen for some time will stop by and ask me where have I been? What's on my mind? They wonder Serving Jesus now, and the old man is dead. And the man you see before you may look a lot the same, and I may wear. Same old name And you're looking on the outside If you could see inside instead You would see a brand new man Called the old And the man you see before you may look a lot the same. I may wear those same old clothes and have that same old name. You're looking on the outside. Such a wicked life. I had no hope inside. And I was lost in darkness. I was searching for the light. And then one night in a little church, after he the preacher said I gave my life to Jesus and the old man was dead and the man you see before you may look a lot same I may wear those same old clothes and have that same old name you're looking on the outside if you could see inside instead And I 
of Jesus. Give Jesus a hand Amen. clap of praise yeah. in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, brother. Like that song. Amen. Hallelujah. The old man is dead. I just love that song. Used to go down to prisons. Some of you was there. We'd go down to prisons and play. They would play and the power of God would move and that song just uh, touched many hearts. Still does. Amen. Hallelujah. How many can say tonight uh, the old man or the old woman is dead? Amen. I'm proud of it too. I tell you, I look back sometimes at those things I did as a sinner and I praise almighty God that he forgives. Amen. Because if he didn't, I wouldn't have no hope tonight. But praise God, we serve a God that does forgive. He is our redeemer and we got things to be proud of. Hallelujah. Because uh, he's coming back. Amen. I'm excited about that. I keep hearing folks say he's coming back. I heard some folks on the television this morning before we left uh, to come to church. And this lady I talked to you a little bit about this morning, had uh, she had died on the uh, MRI table. She had an allergic reaction to it. And uh, she had died. And her she had a praying mother, had 10 brothers and sisters, and her mother just kept praying and praying and uh, the doctor said, she's dead, unplug her. And the mama said, no, she ain't. She's going to live in Jesus' name. And they got to church praying and everything. I think that's the way it went. Anyway, the lady come back alive, but she was in a position. She was in a coma. So they kept praying and praying, and mama took her home and the brothers and sisters, and praise God, guess what? She woke up. Amen? And she said why she had this... Uh, uh, thing where she died on the MRI table and they brought her back to life that she went to heaven and she seen the Lord and the Lord told her to come back and tell the people I like to tell I seen it this morning come back and tell the people that guess what he's fixing to come back and you better get ready amen I'm here to tell you tonight praise God he is coming back I've been hearing it uh, and other people tell you so I've been hearing that for years and I'll tell you right now uh, I remember one time, and it's been a few years back, probably seven, eight, ten years ago. I know it's been ten years ago that when I seen Jesus, but I didn't see all of Jesus. I seen his feet, and I was bowed down at his feet, and I was holding his feet, and I said, praise God, I love you, I worship you, I magnify you, Lord. I said, but I got a problem here. Why is not a king got gold sandals on? My head's down there praising him. I'm telling you, this really happened. I know it was him beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I was bowed to his feet, and, and, and I said, Lord, why ain't you got gold sandals on? You're a king. He had these massive-looking sandals on. You know what he told me? He said, these are my battle sandals, and I'm fixing to come back, you tell them. Hallelujah. So there it is again. That was a few years back, and this is pretty regular, uh, pretty quick what happened. And this lady that died, let me tell you about her. Uh, you know, God got a hold of her and she come walking down the aisle in the church. She could barely, barely walk because she was re recovering from that. But she was recovering and uh, Prefro Dollar had her on as an interview uh, this morning we was looking at. And uh, it touched my heart when she said uh, he was talking to her and she was intellectual. She could talk and everything, you know, and said, listen, uh, said, uh, uh, God told me, uh, he he asked her, Preflo Dollar asked her, said, did the, did the Lord tell you anything while you was there? 
And she said, oh, yeah. She said to come back and tell the people that I'm fixing to come. Now, you know what the Lord revealed to me when she said that? I said, here's a lady that lives out there in the community. And I said, she's probably telling a lot of people that come over there, they witness to, hey, the Lord told me to tell you she's coming back, she's coming back. But look how our God is. All of a sudden, this lady is, is, comes on Preflo Dollar and he interviews her and she tells the people what God told her and she was on the TV and so millions of people seen that message. Now, ain't that just like God? That's just like God, ain't it? Yeah, she was in a coma for eight months, but she woke up, y'all. Is that awesome? And they done wrote her off. They've been praying for her, and the church kept saying life, 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 and she woke up. I didn't get all of it. I got some of it, you know, while we were getting ready uh, to come to church and everything. But uh, the Lord, you know, this morning I had a message, but the Lord moved in a different way, and that's fine because I got two messages here. It's loaded and ready to go. By the way, y'all bring somebody with you Wednesday night because I'll be preaching Wednesday night on the one that's, another one that's loaded right here. And I'll be loading up again starting uh, tomorrow night. Amen. I like it when, you get, when God gives you the word and you just get in it and keep pressing on. Amen. Praise God. But I got a message uh, uh, tonight I think the Lord wants us uh, to look at tonight. Uh, praise God. I got to looking at it and I said, well, Lord, this will lead right into our brother Billy, when he comes on the scene here and starts uh, showing some of the things uh, that the Lord's doing in his neck of the woods. Amen. I'll tell you right now, it's exciting. And I want to tell you, there's some people been asking about this uh, resume here, some other people. So I pray God to get on your heart. You know, I want to tell you about Billy just a little bit. I met Billy, Billy about uh, 26, 27 years ago. I, I don't uh, know if y'all was with us or not, but uh, no, you wouldn't. I think one of the first times, yeah, Jenny was. It was the first time I'd went, Jenny and Jimmy Hughes and Jim Wilson and Judy and some of us all went. And me and Roy was uh, on the, uh, in the airport fixing a flight. We was all fixing a flight down to Dominican Republic. And all of a sudden, uh, I seen this guy over there. Me and Roy got to sitting there. Me and him was joining about some stuff, you know. Something, you know, let's go talk to this guy. So we went over and talked to Billy. And come to find out, old Billy done sold everything he had and everything. God called him to go down to Dominican Republic. And guess what? He didn't have a contact. He had nothing. All he had was a Bible. Lord told me to go. I'm going. And Roy said, well, wait a minute. Listen, let's look at it like this. Why don't you hang with us for about a week or so, and then when you feel led of the Lord what he wants you to do, you do it. So old Billy, he hung with us. I won't never forget it. You know, when we got down there, and uh, he, the Lord done told him to fast for two weeks down there while he was down there, you know. And so the first night we was going through the capital, and we stopped in this cafe, and we went down there and pigged out, you know, Billy pigged out he decided he would go ahead and try it you know and he got definitely sick he got real sick and after that he and you got sick he realized lord i know you told me to fast i should have fasted and i should obey you but he uh he didn't uh, do what the lord told him at that pacific time but the next day and the next the rest of the week he was fasting man he had an anointing on him the power of god was on him. but he stayed with us because we had contact uh and our group that was down there, and the power of God moved, and it was so exciting. I'll never forget, uh, we went to this uh, this uh, village down there, and one of the times, Roy come to me and says, me preach, I'll never forget it. And I went to Jimmy, you know, he had the anointing on him, you know. Jimmy Hughes was there, and, and uh, Bill Posey and all them, you know, they were there. And Roy comes to me and said, listen, you're supposed to preach in this village here. I want you to preach in this village here. And I said, okay, boy, I'm all, you know, I'm new at this, okay. I'm kind of upset, you know, a little bit there. And I say, Billy, Billy, I said, come here, listen, uh, uh, I got to preach in this village down here. And when I come get you, I want you to pray for me before I go in there and preach. In the village, it was just a little grass hut, okay? <clears throat> it was just a little grass hut. And so I, I'll never forget it. Uh, all of us there, you know, and I'm fixing to go in there. You know, I said, well, praise God, where's, where's, where's Billy? You got to pray for me. I can't go in there. I got to have prayer. I looked way down the road down there, and there he was walking in a field down there or something, you know. And I'm saying, hey, God, you got to do this. So, I went in there on faith, amen, and I'll never forget it. I don't know why it's got me, God got me on this, but I'll never forget it, Jenny and all those there, you know, and, uh, and and that reminds me, some of the folks here might want to go to Dominican when it comes time to go again. Some of you been, some of you is due. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, I went in that little grass hut, and I preached, and there was about 70, 75 people gained up in there, you know, and I think we was giving out some stuff, wouldn't we, Jenny, some clothes and stuff, you know, and that village just went alive, you know, and it was across the river over there. And so 
I preached and praised God, to a, a, a bunch of people got saved. And, and, you know, I was a rookie at it at this time. A bunch of people got saved, and so we all got together and said, listen, said, uh, let's just take them right down there at the river, because, by the way, I was preaching right here in the river right there. You know, said, let's just take them down the river and baptize them right now. Let's do it on the spot. I said, okay, let's do it. You know, I ain't, I ain't, by the way, I ain't never baptized nobody. And so I got down there with Bill Posey, and me and Bill Posey got in the water, and Jimmy Hughes and Roy got up on a big hill over here, and they're looking at us now. Baptize them, boys. And, and so me and uh, 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 Bill pulls it down there, and the river's flowing pretty heavy down there. And we baptize them this way, and they're getting up, and they're choking to death, you know. And finally, Jimmy Hughes says, Rick, turn them around <laughs> so the current won't drown them. So I turned them around this way. And, boy, we dunked about 70 of them. And the pirate, we, we dunked 70 of them. And we were getting up and coming out of the river, and uh, somebody come up and said, hey, let's go up there and buy a little uh, grass hut and make a church out of it. Let's buy it and make a church. So we took up a collection of money, and uh, they was going up there to do that. And while us is down there in the water being baptized and all them people, we had a man sitting there on the, on the, uh, the, the shore of the river with a, a, a marican playing Amazing Grace, and he was a Nazarene preacher there. And, man, it was an awesome thing that was going on. And we were going back up, and I'll never forget it. This woman come running down the river and said, y'all come back, please come back. you got to baptize me. And the Lord spoke to somebody. I don't know who it was, Jim, and said, she's supposed to be the preacher of this church, baptize her. And I don't think we had no Bible, did we, Jenny? Bibles have done been given away, and they got looking in there and reached down in there, and a brand-new Bible came out that was during that time, give her a Bible. And she became a preacher of that little. And what we done, we went up there and we bought a, it was a little grass hut, y'all. Wasn't very big. Shoot, it was about the size of maybe half of this. It was a little grass hut. And we bought it. And the, the, the mayor of the little, little village we was in come over there, and I think we paid about, what, $250. I remember it. We took up the collection among us. We paid $250 for this little piece of land in the grass hut, you know. So if anybody wants to go, you can. <laughs> but anyway, what I want to tell you is the mayor come there and he got a rock. He got rocks. And he went over there and he said, this is your border. This is your uh, uh, surveillance line right here. You know, put the rock right here and the rock right here and the rock down here. So we had a little bitty piece of land in that. And we had a preacher in there for some time that preached and done some stuff. But guess what? The flood came, washed the village away. And when the village got washed away, the last time we went down there, I don't remember, uh, but it's a, a, a while after that, we had to go down there, and I preached the village had moved across the river. And I'll never forget, there was an old man, and he was white-headed and white beard. He was a distinguished looking old man, peasant, that lived in that village. I'll never forget baptizing him, or he got saved or something. I forgot. I believe he got, he got saved. Yeah, he did. He got saved. We baptized him. And this has been a few years after that. And I got to preach in that village again on the other side of the river in a pretty nice little building, you know, what I consider compared to what we had. And, and so that old, they went and got that old man and said, he, he's down. And so that old man came down there uh, as we was preaching there and come up to me. He remembered me. And uh, he was just hugging me and loving me up. And he gave me a piece of sugar cane. And I ate that sugar cane in the back of the truck going back to the motel room. But I'll never forget that. It really touched my heart that that old man remembered what happened to him. He's still living for God, and he come down there to get ministered to again. Amen. Is that the power of God? Is the reason we were down there doing it because our Redeemer lives? Amen. He lives, y'all. And it's exciting tonight to, just to stand here and, and, and tell about that. I gave a comment a while ago, and I don't mean this in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a way, but I always remember Good Friday, I was on the battlefield, and I was almost killed that day. But here I am today, amen? I'll never forget. I remember well it was Good Friday, but here I am, praise God. I'm not going to go into details about it because uh, it was a terrible time, but guess what? God even had his hand on me then. And I was not worthy, but he had his hand on me. But I cried out to him many times in a foxhole. I want you to know. But it wouldn't. Uh, it was a jailhouse. It was a battlefield religion when I come home. 
I got back out into the world and everything. But praise God, God had uh, patience and mercy with me, amen? He had a purpose for me. And with knots on my head, shave his hair off, you can see a lot of scars. I'm telling you, this head been worked on. <laughs> Sometimes I have to tell the Lord, oh, Lord, this is Ricky, then ain't Paul, this ain't Peter, and this ain't John. <laughs> Thank God's uh, got humor too, you know. <laughs> Amen. I'm fixing to get a little serious here now, y'all. I'll tell you right now, the Word of God says, see if I can get this thing to work. But that's exciting to think about the missionary fields and some of the things that is, it, it, this happened, you know. Uh, I'll tell you right now, on the missionary field, you can laugh your you can laugh and have the best time, and you can cry too. First time I went, I don't know why God's got me on this missionary right now, but I, oh, I, I'm ready to go. I've been going for a long time, me and my wife, and some of us, a lot of us here have been going a long time, but I never forget the first time I, I believe, it might have been the second time I went. Anyway, we went down to this, uh, no, it's the first time, I believe, because Jenny and them was there. I remember them, all of us being there, you know. And I won't never forget, boy, power of God's moving, all kinds of things was happening. And we went to a village. I think it was the first time. And we went to this village and we preached and all kinds of things was going on. And, and you know, I was kind of young. And today I don't really care because God's in, in control, you know. I was kind of young and, and uh, I had a guitar or something. And uh, them guys was playing them guitars over there in that Dominican Republic like Richard. I mean, everybody picked up a guitar over there could do that, you know, and I could just barely hit G chords. Really? That's G, yeah, man. I praise God I've come a little ways, but I ain't there yet. I've been asking Richard, help me out here, show me some stuff, you know. But, and God's doing it. God's, God's giving me what I got. But I want to tell you something. What I want to tell you is, uh, I was over there in that Dominican Republic and Man, and, and uh, we had went and preached or something, and we come flying down the road down there, and our service lasted a pretty good while, and we got down there, and Sister Jeanette was preaching. And uh, Sister Jeanette had went to some place, and she had short hair, and they wouldn't let her preach. But this other church wanted her or something, and, boy, she was preaching, and we, man, we went down there, and uh, we kept flying in there. The group that was with me, I don't know who all it was, Jenny. You might remember. And Jimmy, I, re I, I think me and us was together, and we went to that service. And we looked in the window, and Sister Jeanette was in there, and she was washing everybody's feet. And, man, the power of God was moving in that place. It was alive, you know. And we had done went to this service, went to, you know. And I was kind of tired and young, and, you know. And, and uh, so we went blasting in there, and they said, well, Brother Rick, you want to sing a song? Get this guy's guitar and sing a song, you know. And I'd had enough. I said, no, I don't want to sing one. Jimmy sang one. I remember it. Jimmy sang one. I was too shy to get up there, I think. But I didn't sing. I'm sitting over, I'll never forget that, talking about you can laugh so much your heart and you, it hurts, you'll cry. But you can cry too. I won't never forget. I'd had enough. It had gotten to me. And I'm sitting over and I said, God, I don't know what Roy's got me into, but I've had enough. Uh, I'm ready to go home. If somebody take me there, I'm saying this to myself, not nobody. I didn't interfere, and, 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 and I didn't get on nobody or talk to nobody, but I'm talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, if, if, if somebody take me to the airport, I'm leaving this place. I'll go home right now. I've had enough. I said that, and I'm going to be honest with you. I had enough. <clears throat> get me out of here. And I sat there in that church the rest of the night. Yeah, 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 everything happened. Yeah, and I'm going to go home and get me out of here, man. I had enough of this. <laughs> Some of y'all might relate to what I'm talking about here, but I'm just telling you the truth. But now I didn't get on nobody, interfere with nobody or nothing. It was between me and the Lord. And I think I did tell Roy, I said, Roy, I'm going to be honest with you. I had enough and I was ready to go home. But the next day, by the time we got to the back to the motel and everything, the power of God come on the next day, I was fired up and ready to go again, you know. And me and Roy talked a little. Me and Roy always talk sometimes, you know. He said, let me tell you, brother. You know, he had to say before he left to go, with, uh, to go and be with the Lord. He said, I'd go to, I'm ready to go to Miami many times. Well, back then, he was young, and he didn't say that. That come along with the years, okay? But he would. And, but he told me, he said, man, you don't know. He said, I've been down here and said, I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. And he said, I'll get home six months later, start, start saying, 
time before you go back. You ready to go? <laughs> Look at some of these missionaries shaking their head. They know what I'm talking about. And some of us just got back from over there. But, you know, that's God, isn't it? And he's a mighty God, and he, he loves us, and he, uh, he's our redeemer. Amen. And, you know, just like I said this morning, it said, Go ye therefore into all the world. That's what God said. You've got the authority and power because God's giving it to you. If you're living for the Lord and you got him in your heart, you're supposed to do that. And if you do it down the street, down here, whatever. And everybody, you know, I look at it like this. It's a, it's a, 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 a great commission that God has called all of us to do, but I feel like he's chosen certain people to go and do that. And, uh, and I feel like these other people are supposed to be the body and help. Uh, get that done amen I, I truly believe that you know but um, he's just an awesome God y'all and he loved us and he's he has given us a great commission he died on the cross for you and I and uh, after he come out and he rose he told his disciples and the people us by the way go ye and I can look in scriptures uh, Mark sixteen fifteen, and some of the others Mark 28 6 go ye into all the world and that's uh, uh, some people say, well, why are you going over there? we got so much to do right here. We have, but God has called certain people to go ye into the world. It's like my brother right here. I'm just going to talk to him about him just a little bit too tonight. He, he's a good man. I love him, but he sold everything he had and he went over there. He has nothing. He, he's back. He has nothing. And uh, I'll never forget. Uh, I, I, I don't mean this in the wrong way, but I love him to death. He gave me something that's valuable and asked me to hold on for it, to it, for him. For, and I've had it for a number of years. Just recently gave it back to him. He had an old single barrel shotgun. <laughs> it's wobbly. But him and his family, his daddy and his brothers had that shotgun. It's an it's a inheritance thing. Handing it down. And he asked me to keep it for him. It was an honor. I had it for a number of years, probably 10, 12 years I've had it for him. And by the way, God allowed me to multiply in some of the stuff I had because I was helping him. I, I'm telling you the truth now. But this is all he had. He don't have nothing now. But he don't care. He's got God. He's got, he's got a mansion up there, you know. But God called him, and he went. He left everything and went, y'all. How many can do that today if God calls you? You better do it. <laughs> you be one miserable person, just like our brother Roy. God called Roy for seven years to preach the gospel, and he wouldn't do it. No, leave me alone, God. Leave me alone. He was one miserable person. Finally, he said, yes, Lord. And when he did, man, look, look where we at right now, because he obeyed the Lord. God did it, but he obeyed the Lord. Amen. So each one of us in here tonight has purpose, and our Lord had a purpose when he hung on the cross for you and I, and we're going to look and see tonight what uh, some of the statements he said while he hung on the cross. We're going to look at seven things uh, that he spoke while he was on the cross. I'm here to tell you uh, the last one he said, it is finished. We'll get in that one in just a minute. But before we do, I want to tell you that wasn't the end. It was for the purpose he came for. But praise God, that was a what? A beginning for you and I tonight. A beginning, hallelujah. Praise God, because of that, we got hope. That's why we in here today, ain't it? Because we know our Redeemer lives, and he is coming back. Hallelujah, praise God. I want to look, uh, uh, see if I can get this thing cranked up here. Uh, amen. Oh, look here. He is risen. Yes, he is. We talked about it in 28.6. It talks about he is risen. But I'm going to go on in here to uh, uh, Matthew 27, I believe it is. Yeah, 27, 46. And we're going to talk about uh, some words that Jesus spoke while he was on the cross, some saying. And I want you to look at this one right here. Boy, don't you know this was something right here? This is God's son, deity, God himself. And look what he said. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, Jesus hung on the cross, so I want to tell you tonight, 
and he had the sin of the world upon him and his own father had to turn his head from him at that time. But its purpose was to come to this earth and make a way for you and I, praise God, uh, to be redeemed of our sins because of his innocent blood. You see, he came... He was deity who came and God said, I want a woman to deliver my son upon this earth in the flesh. And he was deity, he was God, and he was the God-man, he had flesh upon him. Amen? You see what happened there? Look at there. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama, sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, I want to tell you and I tonight, uh, the Bible says in, in uh, Hebrews 13, uh, 5, I believe it is, uh, he'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you. Our God is with us tonight, and he will never leave you. I don't care where you at. If you're living under a bridge, you on a battlefield, you on drugs, crack, cocaine, you an alcoholic, if you cry out to God, he'll come to you, and he'll clean you of all of those sins and he will be your Lord and he'll never forsake you. I don't know about y'all, but it excites me because I couldn't make it without knowing that. Amen. That's my faith tonight. I know he's with me no matter what's going on or what's happening. He is here with me and you tonight. Amen. And he knows and he sees. He hears. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, our Lord, Spoke those words uh, hanging on the cross. Now, I could really get into before and how he got on that cross. A lot of you in here seen that movie, The Passion, most of us. Now, I want to tell you something. That's terrible. I don't like to watch that movie. I'm be honest with you, I don't. But I'm here to tell you, it still don't uh, uh, tell the true story. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, tonight, I want to tell you, I believe it beyond a shadow of a doubt tonight, that our Lord suffered more than any man upon this earth. And I'm here to tell you, men have done terrible things <coughs> to men, y'all, and women. We got an a evil mind. We're born into it. But praise God, God changed us, uh, those who got saved, amen. But now I want to tell you tonight, I truly believe that. I believe our, our Lord suffered more than any man. I mean, that picture was good. I believe it was a, a, a good thing that he done that, but I believe our Lord suffered even more than that. We, we can't imagine. I'll tell you right now, I can't even uh, see and imagine our Lord get, or, or a normal man getting to the cross after what they did to him. But praise Almighty God, he made it to the cross. Amen? Well, you and I, did you know the devil tried to kill him a number of times before he got to that cross? Man, it was time after time they tried to kill him, but the timing wasn't right, and God knew it. And God, our Lord Jesus, uh, he knew why, because he prayed to the Father. By the way, we can know what's happening today because he left us his word, and we can look and see what's going on right now today, praise God. And see, the prophets talked about what was going to happen before he got here, but praise God, he got here, and his purpose was fulfilled. Fulfill. I want to ask you, I want to tell you, God has purpose for everybody sitting in here. Did you know he had a plan when you was born? And you know, some people of the world have rejected that plan. But praise God, some people of the world has, Lord, I surrender all. And when you surrender all to God, I want to tell you right now, your purpose will start being fulfilled. Amen. My brother Roy surrendered all to the Lord thy God, and when he did, he left his whole career, and God called him to be a full-time preacher, and he'd been with the company 17 years. Y'all heard this. I worked with him 17 years, and I uh, love him to death, and we, uh, we went through a lot of stuff, you know, but 17 years, I'll never forget it, Roy. He told me, he said, the Lord's called me full-time, want me to quit, to walk out of it. And man, they done got him. He was fixing to be a big manager. He was trained and ready for a step up in the corporate world. That's where he was at because Roy's smart. He's smarter than I was. He's better than I was. I praise God I got to know him and love him. He's my buddy too, you know. But I want to tell y'all, praise God, he uh, he come to me, Rick, you know, we talked, we were friends and 
you know, I had, uh, I've got very few friends, and some of y'all probably the same position that I can tell it all to. Well, Roy is one of them. I could tell it all to, and he'd tell it all to me. That's, that's a treasure to have somebody like that, y'all, by the way. But I want to tell you, uh, he comes to me and said, Rick, said, the Lord has called me to go full-time uh, pastoring and said, uh, well, praise God. You know, I was excited for him because he'd done been doing it a lot. He'd been going into prisons every weekend, weekend, Friday night, come, bam. They go on to the prisons down there and they stay down there the whole weekend in a motel uh, going into prisons. Powerful. Brought a van, became a prison ministry, liberty ministry, prison ministry, you know, two vans, got two vans going. After a while there, you know, some of us will go down to Atlanta in the big house and some of us go uh, down in Columbia, you know. I never will forget one time when uh, Roy said, I want you and Mike, Mike Thompson used to help us, he was a drummer, he worked with us. So I want you and Mike to go to Atlanta Big House and me and Jeanette's got to do all this up here in Columbia. And I said, we got to go down there by ourselves? <laughs> he said, yeah, I know the Lord's telling you to do that. And I said, okay, brother, if the Lord's saying to this, go. So we hop in the van, we go down there and we do what God tells us to do. We, we, we ministered, Roy ministered up here, him and Jeanette, they stayed in, that, um, in the motels a lot of time. But that's what started Roy doing some of the stuff he started doing. He was doing that already uh, pretty much full time. The ministry was started, but God called him uh, to uh, his purpose. You were supposed to preach. He fought it for seven years. But he said, yes, Lord. And when he did, praise God, he walked away from his business and everything else. Uh, and uh, he started obeying the Lord. And he went to, through trials and tribulations. You can't imagine uh, because God had a great calling on his uh, life, him and Jeanette. And uh, they started working and building the ministry the way God had called him to do. And uh, I know, Roy, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm here to tell you tonight, this church is here for a reason. This uh, 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 place is here, and God's put it here. Uh, it's going to go forward the way God wants it to. Why? Because I'm going to tell you right now, me and Roy talked, uh, and I know that Roy listened to the Lord, and there's a church down here, and there's two churches right up here. There's a church on every corner right here. Why did God want a church right here? Roy asked God that. Lord, you got churches all around this community. Why do you want it? And the Lord told Roy and Jeanette to build it. So there's a reason we're here, y'all. We have a purpose right here, just like my brother had a purpose, praise God. We can't imagine what's going to happen here. After maybe all of us is gone, we don't know what's going to happen. I tell you right now, all of us is going to be gone because we're going to be raptured. I, I believe that's going fixing to happen, y'all. But I'm here to tell you, uh, uh, praise God. And God said, do it. And God gave uh, Roy, I, I don't know why I'm on this either, but God gave him much wisdom and knowledge to do things. He was great in finances and stuff, uh, but he stayed on his knees. Now, I'm going to tell you, I lived down there in the bungalow for about four years. And, of course, I know Roy anyway. He stayed on his knees. I mean, he stayed up there on Saturday. He prayed and on his knees about all day long for Sunday. The great anointing was upon him, amen. But I'm telling you right now, he moved, he done, uh, he had a purpose. What I'm t trying to tell you all tonight, Roy had a purpose, you got a purpose. Everybody in here tonight has a purpose. And it might be just to call this person or, 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 or pray for this person or do this. God's got something in the body for everybody to do. You see what happens? The body of Christ, when you get sold out to the Lord, starts working good, Amen. But I tell you right now, if some of the body of Christ ain't working good, there's something going on, the body ain't functioning right. Amen? So we got to pray that God will uh, uh, get the body right so it will function right because I and we, all of us here, we want to see people's lives changed, touched, and delivered and set free and the things happen. Amen? We want to see that happen. I know we do. And uh, so we want to be in one accord and, and cry out to the Lord because People all over the world's watching us. They want to hear that truth. They want to hear the word. I'm going to preach something uh, Wednesday night that's going to be powerful. You need to come and listen to that too because it's God's word. It's what's going on and what we got to look out for. Amen? So y'all be ready for that. But what I want to tell you, I just like to use Roy as an example. He had a purpose. You see it. We have a purpose. You have a purpose. Some of you on the missionary fields doing some of those things. Some of you... Uh, teachers or preachers or whatever God's called you to do. And some of you might say, well, I don't have, you know, I'm, I don't, hey, the closer you get to God, the more you'll see that you're doing God's purpose. Just like when I 
been, I had been going into prisons and preaching God's word for about two years when I went to the Dominican Republic, and guess what? They come in there and said, I, I was in that big uh, lock, uh, San Juan de la Maguana Motel, up the second floor of that big room, me and Brother Cooper. Some of you remember Brother Cooper. He was my roommate and the bus driver. <laughs> that's the bus driver, Gene. <laughs> that was a good deep sea diver. That's what the Junior told me after I told him what I did. But anyway, uh, I was in there. I'll never forget it. And uh, I'm in there shaving in that cold water, taking my shower, you know, early in the morning. And uh, they're in the upper room praying. It's about 8, 30, 9, something like that. And they knock on the door. <laughs> Brother Rick, you're supposed to come up here to the upper room because we got to lay hands on you and ordain you to preach the gospel. And I said, okay, let me go in here and pray just a minute. And I went in there in the bathroom in the shower. You know, I was shaving, you know, and I said, listen, Lord, I ain't going out there just because man calls me out there. But if you call me out there, I'm going, I'm going to do what you want me to do. And God spoke to me and gave me Isaiah. Isaiah 63, 61, 61. I have anointed you to preach the gospel. So I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, my anointing is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to do it. I know that. But you see how God moves? All of a sudden, I was already doing what my purpose was, and so y'all need to look at some of the things, and some of you already got your purpose. You know what you're supposed to be doing anyway. And some of you might have an area that say, hey, I, want to, I, want, I don't want to be in God. I want to be right where God wants me to be in the right purpose, you know. But we all have it. Jesus hung on the cross for you and I. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The old man is dead. That's what the Word of God says. Now let's look a little bit further. And I wanted this. Uh, uh, this uh, we're talking about seven uh, things Jesus spoke while he was on the cross. See, I could really get deep uh, in the Word and tell uh, about how terrible it was for him to get to the cross. But listen, he's hanging on the cross. That's what we're talking about now. This next one right here is one I, I, I still can't comprehend. It's called agape love. It's talking about the word of God says, uh, Jesus spoke this word hanging on the cross. Uh, he said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what to do. I'm here to tell you, could you do that? They had just beat him and spit on him and, and uh, done all of these things to him. This is uh, the second thing we want to look at. He spoke while he was on the, the cross in Luke 23, 34. Then said, Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They parted his raiment and cast lots. This thing, they got his clothes, his Hebrew clothes, and some of that down there, and they're gambling and parting it, and uh, they're doing all of that. But he looks down there, and now think about it. He looks down there and says, Lord, forgive them. I don't know what they're doing. Oh. God, I just can't comprehend some of that, y'all. And I know we as Christians are supposed to do that. We as Christians are supposed to have love of Jesus. Now, my flesh would be up there, Lord, give me an AK. <laughs> I, me, and, me and Tim were talking back there. He said, I ain't God. And I said, I'm sure glad you ain't God and I ain't God because we really have some problems. Hey, Amen. You know? That flesh wants to rise up, but I'm here to tell you, Lord, uh, we got to pray like Jesus, to be like Jesus. We Christians are supposed to be Christ-like. I want to tell you here tonight, we need to take this example as our Lord hung on the cross. And he said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't realize uh, they was messing with the king, and were messing with God, but he was going to come back. He had to do what he was doing. That was his purpose, y'all. He came to defeat the works of the devil and give us redemption. If he hadn't have done it, we'd have no hope tonight. But he did it for you and I. Amen? Let's go a little bit further. I like that right there. I could stay on that and, and say, Father, forgive him. I tell you right now, I, have to, uh, I was praying this morning. I say, Lord, I have to clean everything up. I say, Lord, if I got unforgiveness uh, uh, with anybody, Lord, I pray, God, I, I choose to forgive them. I pray, God, I want to be right before you, before I minister this word, God. I, I want to pour out to you, and God, I want you to, uh, I want to forgive all those people that's hurt me and I got uh, issues with. I choose to forgive them, God. You know what I mean? Sometimes it'll come back on you. And I say, God, I have done forgiving them, and I pray you give me the mercy and grace. I, I, I choose to forgive them. Amen. I speak in those words. 
I tell you right now, it's awesome, ain't it? You speak those words, speak those positive words. Me and my wife was watching a program last night, Joyce Meyer, that's one of her favorite preachers, you know. And uh, I like her too, because boy, she's she's got she she's one of the generals now. I'm gonna tell you. She's she's right up there with all the rest of them. She's doing an awesome work too. But she's talking about watch that mouth, make sure that mouth speaks positive things, amen. Because your words you're gonna be accountable for uh, when you come before the Lord, y'all. All of us will be. And I wanna be honest with y'all, I spoke some some things that I shouldn't be speaking, and I have to ask God to forgive me. I'm sorry, God, let me speak the right thing that you want and to go forward the way you want me to. Amen? I'm just telling you what, Lord, it says right here, uh, it says right there in God's Word, then Jesus said, now he's hanging on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and they parted his raiment and cast lots. Can you imagine the love that he had on him? I haven't arrived there yet. I want to be like my Lord, I have to cry out to God sometimes. Lord, give me the love of Jesus. God, help me because the flesh wants to rise up sometimes. You know, we're still down here. Now, let's go a little bit further right here. That's the second thing he said, hanging on the cross. And I want you to look at, at this next one coming up here. I like this one too right here. Now, they were two thieves hanging with him. They were thieves, man. They weren't no good. They were stealing, and they were guilty, and they were supposed to be crucified for what they'd done, and they hanging on the cross. And one of them gets arrogant and looks over the Lord and said, if you God, get us down from here. <laughs> Boy, he said it the wrong way, didn't he? Because the other looked over and said, listen, ain't you got no reverence? This man ain't done nothing. He is innocent. He ain't done nothing. Lord, remember me. Ooh, man, did that man there get some rewards because Jesus spoke on the cross. He said, listen, today thou will be with me in paradise. He was talking about the paradise uh, being with him. He's with him right now. I want to talk to that dude when I get up there, you know. <laughs> He's one of us, y'all. He was a thief hanging on a cross dying, but he got saved right before he died, and he went straight to heaven that day to be with the Lord. And the one on the right-hand side died and went straight to hell. Think about it. Can you imagine? Man, you're talking about awesome, oh, that guy. Boy, he had the last-minute stuff there, didn't he? Praise God for uh, God's mercy and grace. And by the way, he wasn't baptized. Can you imagine that? <laughs> the... The thief had hung on the cross, didn't get baptized in water, but he made it, didn't he? But the Bible tells us to, now I'm not knocking that. The Bible tells us if you get saved and you're on fire for the Lord, you're supposed to get water baptized if you can, but he couldn't. You see, but look here. Let's look at the scripture. It says, and Jesus said unto him, now Jesus is hanging on the cross. He said, verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now Jesus spoke those words hanging but you and i you know he's still getting people saved hanging on the cross amen think about that he's listen come to me and, and you're gonna have it and he did and he didn't have to preach a lot to him he just that innocence was there and that love was there and that man hanging on the cross seen it y'all is that awesome or what is that awesome? Look here. Now, that's a, today that shall be in my paradise. That's the third thing. Let's move right along here. And boy, this other one uh, is Luke 23, 46. He talks about, uh, uh, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. You know, Jesus knew he had was, was fulfilling his purpose. It was fixing to end what he was fixing to do. He was fixing to die. And when he died, I want to tell you, he took uh, uh, the keys to hell and he took... Uh, Death, uh, he has authority over that. Amen. I, I seen a preacher uh, or something. He said uh, this morning, said, listen, there's only three things that's going on with the people of the world today. And that's sin. And that's worry. And that's death. Sin, worry, and death. And he was talking to this Harvard graduate. I don't know. Some of y'all might have seen that. He was talking to a Harvard graduate. And the graduate said, what do you mean? Three things going on. said, how, how can your Jesus help uh, this world what's going on? He said, ain't but three things causing all these problems out there. Sin, worry, and death. That's major problems, ain't it? Well, I can tell you somebody who can fix all that. Jesus uh, 
cleanse you from your sins and your worries going to be gone. And praise God, when we get with the Lord, he's going to abolish death in the sinless society in the kingdom he's got prepared for us that's going to be upon this earth, by the way. And he's going to rule and reign in a place called Jerusalem. And by the way, the devil and all his uh, followers want that little bitty piece of land over there, y'all. You see it? You see some of the stuff coming together here? He was on that cross, and this is what he said. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands commit my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. He died. Now think about it. Our king died for you and I. He had innocent blood. He did not have to do this, but he did. He was up in heaven and said, listen, uh, you know, we gave it to Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve done messed up, and the devil done got it back. We need something here, and God already had a plan ready to go. My son said he would go. Amen and redeem back humanity. But the, the, the thing is, it's our choice where we accept it or not. Amen? You folks on the Internet, I want you to think about this. Look here. Let's go to the next one. Let's talk about Father into thy hands I commend my spirit, and he gave up the ghost. And uh, I want you to look right here too. This is what he spoke. I, I got it maybe out of line right here, but look here, John, uh, John 19, 26, 27. He looked down at his mama and he said, woman, behold thy son. And he told his disciples there, behold my mother. He was making that statement for the disciples to take care of his mama. He loved his mother. Now look at here. Because that was the flesh man. Amen. Look at here. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciples, his disciples, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own house and took care of her. Is that awesome? His mother was there, him hanging on the cross. He spoke these words on the cross. Now I want to tell you this other one right here. It's, oh, 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 wait a minute. Let's go back right here. And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, this, the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, yeah, this, look here. 28, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, his purpose for coming down here, that the scriptures had been prophesied for thousands of years might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. You know what they gave him? They didn't give him a good cold drink of water. They gave him vinegar and some stuff. Anyway, they gave it to our Lord. He did it for you and I. He did it on that. He did what we're, he spoke these words on the cross hanging and for his last few moments. He did it for you and I. And I want to tell y'all something. Did you know when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he cried out to the Lord and said, listen, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. See, that was the human part coming. I've been there, ain't you? In the Garden of Gethsemane, he cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. I, I don't want to drink this cup, God. But if not, your will be done. Huh. Hallelujah. He done it, y'all. He done it. It's done deal. Now let's go a little bit further right here. He spoke those words, I thirst. I like this last one right here. It talks about it's a done deal. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. Well, he served and done what he's supposed to do. He did his purpose. Praise God. I want to tell y'all tonight, uh, our king hung on the cross, spoke these words. I'm here to tell y'all tonight, our redeemer lives and we are redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Praise God. I'm here to tell you. I want to tell you tonight too, when he said it's finished, uh, he's not in the grave. You know, my brother uh, Billy spoke uh, about the Catholics. They walk around with Jesus hanging on the cross. He ain't on the cross no more. He's gone. Praise God. He sat at the right hand of the father. He is alive. He is our redeemer. And we've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. So that's what we got to be thankful for today because why? 
Our Redeemer lives, hallelujah. We celebrate resurrection day to day, hallelujah. It's exciting, y'all. I tell you right now, to me, this is the most exciting uh, day. You know, the greatest gift of mankind is the birth of our Christ. But this one right here, when he, it, the, the scripture that we talked about in Matthew 6, uh, it said, he is risen. This is the day we celebrate. The most exciting thing for a Christian is our Lord has risen. He is alive. He's not in the grave. He is alive and he's coming back. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And everybody said, amen and amen. Is that exciting or what? I'm going to ask everybody to bow your head in here. And I'm going to ask those folks on the internet too. Uh, I just pray that God will get a hold of you. I pray the folks that's on the internet uh, that God uh, will uh, touch your heart. And I pray that God will come upon you like a mighty rushing wind. The Spirit of God that's in here with us uh, is right there with you if you'll receive him and accept him. And if you'll ask him to come in your heart, he will come in your heart because he loves you. We see that with the words he spoke on the cross. He said, forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they're doing. Some of you out there have been doing things that's wrong. Some of you terrorists have been doing things wrong. But God even loves you and he's willing to forgive you. If you'll submit to him and bow down to him, he'll forgive you of those evil things that you've done and you'll be in paradise uh, like this man that hung on the cross with him we're going to be in uh, uh, paradise uh, with our Lord in heaven and then we're going to come back down here and rule and reign with him for eternity you can have that same gift because our redeemer lives and we are saved by the blood of the lamb just receive the blood of the lamb ask Jesus in your heart the word of God says in Romans 10, 9, if thou confess him with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God, uh, that he was buried and on the third day he arose that we celebrate today. The Bible says, not this preacher, the Bible says, the word of God, thou shalt be saved. That's what he says. And if you want to do that, I pray that you'll say a, a prayer right now. Say, God, forgive me for my sins. I'm sorry, God. Come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. And he'll do that for you. And I pray that you'll look in the right-hand corner of our uh, network there and it says contact. If you'll contact and say, Brother Rick, I confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord. Send us a note. We want to rejoice with you. We want to rejoice with you because we love you. Our King loves you so much that he sent his only begotten Son to die for you. Praise God. God bless you tonight. Every head still bowed in here. Anybody in here want to see the